How's everyone doing? I was going to say, I can't believe we're here at 8.40 in the morning on Saturday, but I'm sure you've all been up like for two hours and got your kids to whatever practice they need to get to, just like I did, walk the dogs, whatever it is you need to do, right? We're always so busy. Right back here. I have my phone, I promise I'm not texting, but I put a couple of uh, notes in there so I couldn't forget because uh, I sort of get involved, start talking, I'm Puerto Rican, and it just keeps <laughs> going. <laughs> um, so, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be here. I was just telling uh, folks that um, we were here like two weeks ago to do a story on the Kobe uh, Fern site, and um, your city manager, your mayor, everybody's always so welcoming when we come to do a story here. Uh, Glendora is such a wonderful community. You guys are all so very lucky to have it here, and us too, right? I mean, I live in the Pasadena area, but um, I can come here and, and um, go shopping, of course, <laughs> and um, find uh, good food and everything like that. It's nice to explore other communities and, and do the trails. I actually did that trail. I did not run it. I walked. I have the same trail she was talking about, but, um, but it's just a wonderful place, so uh, congratulations for having such a great city. Um, we recently, NBC, you know, we were part of so many community events and we were um, pre presenting sponsor to the American Cancer Society Walk that happened last weekend that doubled in size. There were more than 10,000 people who were there. So it was so awesome to be there and participate. We were at the inaugural one last year and it had doubled from that and it just shows how um, we're growing in terms of getting the word out there and just talking about things, which I'll get to in a little bit. I think that's one of the most important things. Um, I stand before you today, uh, two years cancer free. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in April of 2013. Um, I was sitting on the couch um, doing a self nurse exam, watching television, because I just find the time to do it, and I found the bomb. Um, I was an athlete in college, I played volleyball, ran track, um, I knew every bump and bruise on my body, so I instinctively knew that something was wrong. So being the reporter that I am, feeling that I was on deadline, I went to the doctor, uh, got the mammogram, and lo and behold, um, it was cancer. So from the time that I self-diagnosed myself on the couch and actually got um, the news and then started my first chemo, um, it was about a week and a half. Um, but I, that's the way that I approached it, right? I wanted to get it, tackle it, and, and work it out. Um, and at 37, I had no history of breast cancer in my family. Um, I wasn't on track to get a mammogram, right? So it was all about me, knowing who I was and knowing my body. And that's really step one in wellness, is tapping into who you are, mind, body, and soul, and figuring out um, what's wrong and what's right. Right? It doesn't have to be cancer, it can be any other challenge, it can be any other thing that you're dealing with, but knowing when you have those lows and those downs and knowing how to pick yourself back up. Um, also approaching your health as an individual, right? Because we're not all the same people. So I was lucky enough to be treated at Huntington Hospital at the breast center there that um, offers free acupuncture <coughs> for breast cancer patients, that offers a small room um, so that you can um, be fitted for wigs and things like that, so you don't have to be in, you know, in front of other folks if you don't feel like it. Uh, that's actually where I shaved my head on television <laughs> um, for the first time, because I wanted to take control. Um, when I felt cancer was taking control, so the first thing I did was shave my head. And I have this beautiful Halle Berry haircut, which I actually think I should have done before, but I didn't realize until later. So there's some good things that come out of it. Um, but it's, it's about approaching what you want. So uh, Huntington was really great because it had all of these uh, things that you could do. And you, if you didn't want it, you didn't have to do it, but you could approach it um, in any way that you want. So I think that like being healthy and finding your wellness is seeing yourself as an individual and then finding your own path. And really throughout life, I feel like I had done that with career and with being family. But you know, sometimes with the health, I was healthy, and I, but I had not seen that as such a big, important thing. Um, and that's one of the most, uh, you know, it's one of the most things, it's the most important things to actually get you to the other side. Um, so I said mind, body, and soul, and individualism, and those are the two things that are so important when you go um, looking for health. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was um, healthy and fit. Um, I, like I said, I had no history of it. So for me, it was a real shock. Um, 
But then as I was getting through treatment, um, I wanted to work through it all. So I worked through all my chemo, um, you know, half the week, and I was out in the field, and I was doing my reports. And it's very different than other women who don't want that, and they want their rest and relaxation. And so uh, I had doctors who treated me as an individual. And I learned to ask even more questions, right? As a reporter, um, that's in my nature. I know to do that. But when I was faced with something like cancer, I, I didn't know what to do, and it was very difficult. And I sort of found my center and asked a lot of questions. You know, wellness and being healthy and treating yourself is about asking questions. It is about getting out there and knowing all that you can about something. So this is wonderful because it gives you aspects of how to better your life in so many different ways. Whether it's a facial or a jiu or anything that you do, it's finding things that make you better and make you healthier. Um, but knowing that you are sort of the captain of the team. And that's sort of how I felt when I was going through um, all of my treatment. Um, it would give you um, things to say and to do. And I said, no, this is me, and I want to do things my way. So always remember that as you go um, forward. And you know what's interesting is the mayor was saying you know, that um, there were so many things that, that we do for others and we forget about ourselves. And that really is true. <laughs> Um, I'm a mother of one child, an 11-year-old. I feel like I have seven children, right? <laughs> um, my husband is a cinematographer, so he travels a lot. So for example, during the last week, Lulu had um, early dismissal. There were parent-teacher conferences. I have two dogs, and my husband's away on the East Coast, and I work full-time, no less than 10 hours a day. So how you get through all of that, everyone seems to come first, except for you, right? And sometimes, um, that's probably it's the opposite, right? It should be the opposite. My mom told me when I was going through cancer, because I was trying to, to do a lot, and, and she said, you need to sit down. You need to relax, because if you're not centered, then everybody else is really sporadic, right? Yeah. And so there's like this sense of, you know, this magnetism that mothers and women sort of have, that if you're all scatterbrained, so is everybody else. So um, taking the time to give yourself a moment is always important. And I did that while I was going through treatment, and I do that now. And even like in the truck, if I'm having a moment where it's like all crazy, and I don't know if I'm going to get the story in on time, I just take a moment to sit and breathe and find myself. And throughout uh, your day, and throughout your, you know, whatever, you know, find that center again, and make sure that you're whole before you can help others, right? Because that's all we, we do as, as women is this is sort of in our nature um, to be there for other people. Ask a lot of questions, be proactive, right? Um, I think we all know that being healthy and fit is important. Eating well, um, getting exercise, and it doesn't have to be running. You know, we're not all on the same level, but take a walk with a friend, walk your dogs, um, I did that during treatment when I couldn't play volleyball on my color team for two and a half hours, right? I didn't have the strength to do that. But I found ways to find a moment to be outside. And in wonderful Southern California, we can do it. When I lived on the East Coast and there were four feet, or there was four feet of snow, um, it was kind of impossible to do anything. But here, you can really get out and get exercise and just try to find ways to do it. And if you do it in community and do it together, sometimes it's easier. Um, a lot of the times I'll meet friends for a uh, walk with our dogs. And we just go chat. And a lot of it is this, right? <laughs> Talking with my friend. But we walked 45 minutes, an hour, without even realizing it. So make sure you just get out there and, and you do that and you talk about what's going on. Because I think one of the biggest things that I found through all of this is that sometimes we just don't talk about the things we need to talk about. We talk about everything else, right? best place to shop, I got this amazing facial, um, work is tough. You know, we even talk about, you know, the, the, those things. But we don't talk about how we're feeling, how we're doing, um, how to best treat each other. Did you go get your mammogram? Hey, are you doing okay? So not only ask questions for yourself when you go to your doctors, um, but ask questions of your friends, right? And when you have those moments at a book club or at lunch, like make sure you tap into how others are feeling and doing. Um, it's interesting because when I was going through breast cancer, 
and I was diagnosed uh, with it. I called my parents who were in Puerto Rico. And we're a very open family, and we're very liberal. We talked about every probably too much at the dinner table. But there were things we didn't talk about that were important to talk about. And so I called my mom in Puerto Rico, and I said, Mom, you know, don't worry. I'm on track. I have this great team behind me. Eric, my husband, he's great. Like, we're, we've got everything done. Um, but I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she's quiet on the other side, and you can tell she's concerned. She's a very tough woman, and she's, you're going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, because when I had cervical cancer, and your grandmother had cervical cancer, we were just fine. She didn't tell anybody that she had cancer, ever. And I'm, I'm in the car on the tooth, and I go, <laughs> and I get off the freeway. And at first, I'm really, really upset. Because I tell her, I said, Mom, why did you keep this from me? She's like, well, those are things you just didn't speak about. And I told her, yes, but you hurt me in the process, right? Not because, who knows if I would have diagnosed my breast cancer any earlier, but the idea that I wasn't in control, that I didn't have all the information that I could have, that was the problem. And so I find a lot that we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it with our friends. And so it's wonderful that we're here and that we are all sort of open about those things. Because our vulnerabilities, by the way, are actually strengths. Right? When we find a way to say, I need help, or I'm not doing so great, I'm, I'm really stressed out, and um, could, could you please help me? I just did it with a friend recently. I got to Thursday, and I thought I was doing good. And there's a lot going on, and I had misscheduled something. So my daughter's like alone in the middle school, you know, I'm not freaking out because I'm somewhere else, you know. And I call a friend, I'm like, I'm not doing so great. Could you pick up Lou for me and just keep her for a couple of hours? And she's like, yeah, no problem. Find your strength in community and talk about things, right? Talk openly um, and be open to others who may not be doing so great, right? Because there may be something deeply rooted in whatever they're feeling or how they're doing or if you see them a little bit disheveled. Um, so it's important to just be open about it. And I do this and speak openly about it, and I did a whole cancer series, which you can still find on NBCLA.com, um, from talking to my doctors and finding out a little bit more information about what is breast cancer and how to go through it, but just sort of my experience going through it and how um, open that I was and why I was open um, for my daughter and for my nieces. So then hopefully one day they don't have to deal with it. But at this point right now, my 11-year-old can openly speak about it. I said, oh, yeah, when mommy went to through cancer, I made her lunches because I made it easier for her. Um, I made my bed so she wouldn't have to do it. Um, and it was finding um, ways for everybody to be involved. Um, I find that when we think about things that are very difficult for us, we sort of silo ourselves, right? And it's sort of not instinctual with what women are. We like coffee clashes, and we want to be in group and in community. So do that with your health as well. Do that with your health as you move along and you find out things. And it's with any challenge, um, community really helps. And if you are a diabetic and it's been a difficult time, um, if you're going through some difficulties in your heart, if your husband is having um, any health issues, find strength in your friends and in your family and ask for help. And know that in that help and in that vulnerability and those moments of weakness, you actually find a lot of strength. Um, and the last thing I'll leave you with, is what she say? See, I told you I would talk a lot. Um, is don't be afraid. Like, we're so afraid. I've met so many women that are like, well, I just don't want to go to the doctor because I don't know what they're going to tell me. Um, if I would have waited to go to the doctor, I'm not sure I would be in the same place I am right now. My tumor never spread. It didn't get in the lymph nodes. I found it when it was this size, and I dealt with it. And that's what we do, right? We as women deal with things. My daughter was left alone. I called three moms. One could pick her up. We got it done. It was like in five minutes. Do the same with your health. Don't be afraid to go to the doctor. Don't be afraid of what they're going to say. Get the mammogram. It doesn't even hurt. And then go have like a mammogram lunch with your friends. <laughs> Seriously, go have a little mammogram party. Everybody go. Get it together. And then go have lunch afterwards. 
Um, it can be as simple as that if we ourselves sort of change the conversation from it being such this big thing, right? And not being afraid of what may come um, is the best way to approach something. Um, we, we can't always predict it. And if I tell you right now, like, would I want to go through cancer? Absolutely not. But that challenge has, to me, made me a better person, has opened doors and made me new people. And so I try to take the positives of even the most negative things, because that is what's important, right? Is to continue that conversation. And so that's what I want to leave you with, is continue the conversation. Talk about it. I talk to you guys about um, talking with your friends and talking with others and family members about what's going on in their lives and really being in tap of a feeling, right? Because it's my mind, body, and soul. Physically, no one would have ever known that I was going through breast cancer on the outside, right? And there were some people that I met even while going through chemo, some public information officers, right? Some cops that I have to talk to all the time. And they would say, wow, you look really good. Is that a new haircut? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> I was wearing a wig and they had no idea, right? So a lot of it was how I walked out into the life, into life right? How I treated every single day. Um, and I did it before, during, and now after cancer, it's even more prevalent. So I don't live to work, I work to live. I make sure that I do one thing every day that makes me happy. And I take a moment to breathe and take it all in, right? And find things that are important to me. Don't feel guilty, because those are moments that are yours. Women love to feel guilty about things that like, they feel are, well, this is too much on me. Don't feel guilty. In work and in life and in play, like, ask for what you want, be fearless, and just get out there and do things. Do things together in community. And your health is the most important thing, because again, like I said at the beginning, you're at the top of the pyramid, and everybody comes after you and depends on you in some way, form, or fashion. Your husband could not make a dentist appointment, I know, if you're having a mind. Your kid could not get to school without you. So if you're not strong and you don't feel strong, then you're not going to be able to really take the best out of life if you can. Thank you so much for having me today. I really, really appreciate it.